right, so onto the actual review. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to start off with just uh, throwing a bit of voltage at this thing and seeing how it uh, responds to it. Um, obviously, for electronics, a lot of you guys look at DC voltages quite a lot, so that's going to be the first place we're going to look. Uh, so I'm going to throw this guy over to DC voltage. Um, just so you guys know the ranges, I'm going to go through them here. Let's just see if we can get in a little bit closer. Right. We've got microamps, DC and AC, milliamps, DC and AC, amps, DC and AC, obviously off position, volts, DC, AC, which is auto selecting, VGB, volts, AC, volts, DC, hertz, ohms, diode test, capacitance, and uh, continuity. So let's just go back out and uh, start getting into the review of this meter. Okay. So I'm going to power up my power supply. It does make a little bit of noise, but um, we can see what's going on. Right, so at the moment it's in the millivolt scale. So if we start applying voltage now, we're applying currently 60.7 millivolts. As you can see, I'm going up gradually. Let's quickly set this power supply to 500 millivolts. Okay, power supply set at my 500 millivolts, so we've got 501 millivolts showing over here, or 0 0.501 volts. Uh, let's set it up to 3.3 .3 volts, or maybe 3 volts, there we go, 3.019 volts. Set it up to 5. Okay, set my power supply on 5 volts, we've got 5.01 volts. I'm going to take it up to around 13.8 volts now. There we go. Okay, and while now it's showing 13.76, we can take it up a little bit more. There we go, 13.79, 13.8 volts. Uh, take it up to around 24 volts. Oops, overshot a little bit. And 24 volts. 23.99 volts. Okay, I'd say that's pretty close. And then all the way to my power supply is maximum, which is showing 31.6. So yeah, okay, 31.58 volts. Close enough. I'd say that accuracy is pretty good uh, for the DC range. Uh, let's just take that all the way back down again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my fluke meter in as a comparison so we can actually see between the two um, how accurate this meter actually is as a comparison. Okay. We all see, yep, I can see that fine. Let's just hook this up here to the power supply lead. So that both meters will have the same, be measuring the same source. And we're going to go volts DC, right? So I'm just going to stop at some random points. We got 4.922 volts, 4.93 volts. Um, so it's in with, within its rated accuracy. Uh, 6.383, 6.4, 9.07, 9.09. Uh, 12.53, 12.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 15.56, 
Now, let's go and have a look at the continuity tester on this meter and uh, see how it responds. Um, if you were to compare to the fluke, uh, we all know how good the fluke meters are. We would go through to here, hit the continuity. It's a good latching meter, so it does. Uh, it's got a very good response. Um, now let's just quickly change over and uh, check out this meter's response. I'm just getting the fluke out of the way here. Right, so we're going to bring this meter back to the center. And uh, let's take a look now. I'm going to go down to our multi-mode over here. And then we have got to select the, push the select button to select the continuity tester. It's also latching, but um, the leads themselves aren't too great. And the beep is very soft. Uh, that could be attributed to the uh, IP67 waterproofing. But it is definitely latching. So yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Leads could be improved. Um, what else can we look at over here? We can uh, have a look at the frequency in hertz. What I can possibly do here is uh, hook up a PWM generator um, and generate a Arduino controlled PWM signal uh, just to see how it works out. So let me just hook this up here. Now this should be around 490 hertz from power on. And there you go. There's your Arduino 490 hertz. No problems there. Um, unfortunately, I don't see a duty cycle function on this specific meter. So reading duty cycle is not possible, but you can read the frequencies. No problems with that. What else should we look at? Okay, volts AC I'm not really going to get into, but I am going to go through to the volts DC AC. And um, let's see if we start pumping a PWM signal in, it automatically switches to DC. So the meter is smart enough to know what you're putting into it, which is pretty cool. It sort of auto detects um, what it is and then make some measurements accordingly. That's quite nice. Okay, so what I've done is I've gotten in a little bit closer over here with the camera. Um, I'm going to throw 20 volts at this thing. One of the things that's important to me, especially when peaking some sort of uh, uh, signal or something like that, is this analog display graph over here. So this is 20 volts pulsed on there. As you can see, that little analog display graph is almost immediate, and then the digital display catches up. So yeah, it's quite usable for peaking circuits and stuff like that. Every time I'm just pulsing it on, off, on, off. And you can see the digital display takes a while to catch up, but the little analog meter is pretty constant. And if I turn down, as you can see, the little analog meter responds almost instantaneously, and then the digital display sort of counts itself down. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. Um, no problems with that whatsoever. Um, let's have a look at another thing now. It's the backlight. If you push and hold it, it's supposed to go through. There we go. We've got a bit of a blue backlight, which is quite nice. Quite a nice touch. It's not very bright, but it'll definitely be easily visible uh, at night when working on something. Um, we've got the min-max, uh, all the usual sort of functionality over here. Um, minimum, maximum. Connect to voltage, maximum 4.72, minimum zero. You can go back, it's almost like a maximum peak hold type of, of, of function, which works quite well. So lastly on this comparison or um, view of this meter, we're just going to actually have a look at the actual build of the multimeter. Um, a few things to note, the leads because of the IP67 waterproofing have these uh, sort of bands over here which seal into the body of the meter, they're quite tight, uh, that's obviously for water sealing and then you do have these sort of plugs which um, seal off the other ends um, 
making it uh, waterproof uh, to read the, uh, the IP67 waterproof rating. Um, the actual meter itself is built pretty well. It does uh, get quite scratched up on the screen, but uh, it doesn't affect, affect the visibility in any way. Um, it still works quite well. The rubber sort of protection on you is built into the meter, it cannot be removed. The tilting bale is not too bad. Um, the meter won't just fall over, but it's, it's not the best that I've seen. And being plastic, it could quite possibly break off. Uh, the little holders at the back for the the leads is quite nice, quite a nice touch, uh, nothing unusual for a multimeter. Uh, the way I find that it works quite well is uh, in my case, I basically attach it like so, and then just basically fold it away like that and pop it into the, the case for, for, for storage. Quite nice, uh, cause it's like I say, it's quite a versatile meter, quite a tough little meter. And um, yeah, I've had no problems with the accuracy or overall use of it up till now. It's been pretty reliable and enjoyable to use. Um, you can pick these meters up in South African rands for around 1,200 to 1,500 rands, or you can pick them up secondhand anywhere from about 300 rand onwards. Um, definitely worthwhile if you can't afford a fluke. So guys, just in concluding the um, MT1880 multimeter review. Um, I have been using this meter for about a year now uh, on an off location. Uh, it's actually in my go kit. I use it for on-site uh, electrical and electronic repair, diagnosis, etc. It uh, performs admirably. It's never given me a day of trouble. Um, the few functions on it which have been quite handy, such as the auto ACDC functions, etc., on this meter over here. Uh, by the way, this is another section of the Evian Labs. This is my editing computer, my work desk over here. Uh, but a few other things uh, to note. Cost, construction overall, battery life on this meter are pretty good. Um, I'm, I didn't go into a very in-depth sort of let's measure resistance, let's measure capacitance, because I can guarantee you that it's well within spec when it comes to measuring values such as resistance, capacitance, average voltage and stuff like that. This meter, like I say, I picked it up second hand relatively cheap and it's never given me a day of problems. It's a nice size to hold in the hand uh, when you're busy doing measurements or, or etc. I find quite often when I'm busy working in a DB box or something like that, I might have the negative lead sort of there, touch it in and I can probe around with a positive lead uh, in the DB box, no problem at all. Um, sometimes in electronics, same sort of scenario applies. Uh, on my bench, I personally make use of the Fluke 87 Series 5 um, and a couple of Brayman multimeters. Uh, this here being in my go kit, portable on site location work. But uh, all in all, if you don't have three, four thousand Rand to spend on a multimeter, this is a very good investment and it'll last you for a good few years. My previous major tech meter, the MT24, which is now with a friend of mine, Duncan, I hope you're enjoying that meter out there. Um, he that meter is still 100% in order. It's a good few years old, possibly three, 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 nearly four years old. No problems whatsoever. And it's not even the industrial version like this. It's actually the hobbyist version. Uh, very nice multimeter all around. So guys, if you guys have any questions about the MT1880, you can post them in the comments below to this video and uh, I will check them out and come back to you. I'm not gonna go into all the intricacies of 5%, 1%, bullshit accuracies whatever it is because they the meter is well within those specs um, if you want a good meter don't want to spend mega bucks grab one thanks for watching guys until next time take care hey everyone thanks for watching yet another installment of the Evian blog um, I hope today the little review of the MT1880 major tech multimeter helps somebody out there who's thinking of purchasing a multimeter not sure what to get um, on the next episode, we're going to be taking another look at the Evion Labs power supply, the variable voltage power supply, which we've been working on. Um, there have been some major improvements to the design, um, and I'm hoping you guys will want to build along with that. I think it's going to be a rather exciting project. Uh, digital controlled power supply, revision six. But guys, take care out there and enjoy your electronics. Until next time, ciao for now.